everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Kay Thompson. I'm Chief of Public Relations for the Oklahoma Department of Corrections. And today we have with us Chief of Offender Advocacy, Nicole Fleming, and a very special guest, a Board of Corrections member and secretary, correct? Mm -hmm. Rhonda Bear. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. So today we are going to kind of talk about your unit, Offender Advocacy, and can you explain a little bit to um, me what offender advocacy is? Yeah, thanks, Kay. I'm, I'm so excited to share what offender advocacy is and the role that we play in changing lives. So as you know, when Director Harp um, came on board, he changed the vision to We Change Lives. And it was pretty quickly that we started having conversations about how important it was to bring the voice of those that are incarcerated to the table to make sure that we met that vision. So in April of this year, we developed uh, this division to start strategically planning how to do that, mm -hmm. right? And I, I'm so excited to lead this initiative. It's never been done on this scale in the state of Oklahoma or anywhere in the United States. Sure. So I hired very knowledgeable staff and we started making our way to every facility. We met uh, with residents of the council members, which were already established. Um, and we discussed how, how to just strategize meeting everybody's need. How do we make sure that every voice is captured, right? And that's when the idea of surveys were born. So the surveys were developed with, uh, with the idea of capturing ratings of every category in a facility that essentially impacts someone who's incarcerated, right? Um, and these surveys will be completed on a one to five rating scale, so from very poor to really well, and then a middle average score. Um, and they're done so anonymously. But with that, they're able to rate everything from staff communication to medical, food service, program availability, pro-social activities, I mean, essentially everything, mm -hmm. right? So once we get that aggregated data back, we have you know a team of people that translate and analyze or analyze and translate this data. We go back to the facilities and meet with the residents and we discuss why things are rated the way they're rated, mm -hmm. okay? So of course we have over 22,000 people, 23 facilities in several categories. So to make sure that we don't tackle everything at once and crumble, we will focus on those areas that were rated the lowest and we'll have conversation on how to improve. First, why are things rated that way? And then how do we improve? It's about making sure that when, they're, when they have a seat at the table, they are part of the solution. How do we improve on something, right? Right. Rana, as someone who is formerly incarcerated, what is having this unit and these surveys like, what's your opinion? How does that make you feel? Yeah, so I'm really excited about the surveys because I feel like it gives the uh, residents in the prisons a voice. They're being heard. And of course, this is not intended to pit inmates against staff. This is intended to make Oklahoma prisons some of the best in the state. So I'm really excited about these surveys. And help us identify what really needs to be improved and what's great. I think also through these, we might even be able to identify who gets to be praised, like what staff, what is going on that really deserves being noticed that maybe is going on unnoticed. Right. And then of course, what is it that we need to work on? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, cause we are spread all over the state. So it's kind of hard to know um, what everyone, you know, who is excelling at what facilities without, right. you know, some, some sort of feedback. Right. And she kind of touched on this doesn't pit staff against inmates. Right. Um, so what are the staff's roles in the surveys or, or in, you know, within your role too? Yeah, that's a great question. So when you're looking at changing culture, right, and driving this new vision of We Change Lives, it's collaboration. So whether that's staff, the residents, lawmakers, it's everybody coming together to communicate and figure out how do we improve systemically on this change. Okay, so once the collaboration happens, what is um, the role of the inmates as well? So it's, it's so very important that they feel empowered to have a voice, right? So taking the surveys or bringing information that allows us to make those changes is, is very important. That's their role, to, be, to use a voice. And do you think this is going to have any sort of impact on um, Oklahoma or even nationwide corrections? Absolutely. Absolutely. When you start looking at changing culture and changing lives, you know, if we do this successfully, then we are setting, we're setting our incarcerated people up for success at reentry, not just in society, but as individuals. And if we do that, 
we're ultimately reducing recidivism, mm -hmm. right? And this is something that can make Oklahoma healthier. And I hope to be a model state for that. If we can make Oklahoma healthier, we can make the nation healthier. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so your role as being on the Board of Corrections now, mm -hmm. which is unprecedented, like we have another uh, former incarcerated gentleman on our, our board as well. Um, how do you feel like you've seen the inside, now you kind of see it from the administrative side. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like you're going to be using your role as a Board of Corrections to, to make a change? What changes are you wanting to, to put in place? Well, one of the very first things I'm really excited about as far as change is when we change the mission statement. Mm -hmm. And we began, began to focus on, we change lives. Yes. And our board also acknowledges that people change. Therefore, giving people who've been incarcerated a chance to sit on the board. Um, also the survey. I really just want our prison system to be a top 10. And I feel like with this survey, we're giving our state the opportunity to improve what has been broken for a long time. Yes. I feel like the board is very supportive behind the survey and we're looking forward to the data that will show us where we're strong and where we need to improve. And I think, you know, a, a lot of the world today is going to making data driven decisions. So why not do that also in corrections? Right. Mm -hmm. So I really think this initiative um, with you know the vision of our executive staff is great, and with the with the board, I think it's it's perfect right now. It's the perfect time to do this. I just want people to know that this this initiative is so important. You know, it's important to to reshaping corrections, to reshaping America, and reshaping Oklahoma. So using a voice, collaborating together as a community is essential. Absolutely, and so your you don't just go by these surveys. You're in the facilities talking and meeting with the inmates. That's right, all the time. And um, how do you think that is also helping and changing? Yeah, so it's, that's a great point. So, you know, at first when these surveys come out, I imagine there's going to be a little bit of apprehension. Um, I think that's human nature. Mm -hmm. So making sure that I am in facilities and discussing these, discussing everything with the residents, they know that, you know, we're here for a reason, we're here for a mission. And when they start feeling those changes, then they're more apt to take that at a later time. So maybe they just need to see it first. Sure, absolutely. Right? And and Rhonda, do you see the change, the culture shift happening? I do. I see uh, Nicole's presence. At first, the inmates were very hesitant mm -hmm. and didn't really know if she could be trusted or if this new initiative, we want to hear your voice, is real. But each week that she's been in the prisons, mm -hmm. um, I've gotten more feedback from the inmates of how they're valuing this opportunity mm -hmm. to, they feel like they matter. For the first time, they feel like they matter. Absolutely. They have a they voice. Do. And not only do they have a voice to be heard, they're being a part of the change. Mm -hmm. They're being part of the changing the culture. Mm -hmm. And that's huge when you have over 22,000 people yeah. who get to be part of changing the culture. Yeah. You're going to get change. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Any closing words? I know as a volunteer in prison, I keep telling them mm -hmm. there will be no retaliation because right. it will be anonymous. That's right. But I think just that's you right. saying that again matters because they're like, what if she's not telling us the truth? Sure. Yeah. Like, no, she's telling me the truth. Yeah, no, it's a hundred percent the truth. You know, remaining anonymous matters. There is there is a real fear of retaliation and sometimes actual retaliation. And so to protect them of that and make sure that they feel empowered and like they can trust us enough, you know, that that's why it, it is that way. Use your voice, attend attend the meetings when we're there and we sit at the table together and we discuss why things are the way they are. And staff included. It's it's communication. It's collaboration. It's everybody together. Absolutely, because together we change lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you ladies so much for joining us today. Thank you. We appreciate your time and your insight. Until next time, thank you guys. Thank you.